Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Witty Banter Book Club Podcast. I am Maddie, here with... Courtney, hello, and today we will be reviewing Icebreaker. But first, a deviation from our her book talking for a personal announcement from my dearest Pookie in the frame. Would you like to share with everyone something that has happened to you hmm. recently? I got engaged. And it wasn't to me. In case you were wondering. Yes. Although I'd wear Courtney's hand Courtney's ring on the other hand. That's right. And yeah. No. It's a House of the Dragon ring, which if you've been paying attention, they just dropped the trailers today. And uh as you are watching this episode, you might feel as though you are choosing between <laughs> Team Green and Team Black, because unfortunately, folks, today is going to be a house divided. Uh, <laughs> I wish one of us was wearing green right now. I know. It wouldn't be me. <laughs> I know. I don't have anything green. Um, other than, like, workout I, clothes. I hate the high towers, so. Yeah. Except for, um, yeah, Allison's something about that eye patch. Something about that eye patch just really gets me. <laughs> I <laughs> You said, mm, Amon. Mm, mm. Uh, I'm more of a Damon girl, you know. I, To be honest, I was a Harwin Strong girly, but mm. tragedy has, has struck. We know what happens to him, so. Yeah. <laughs> Not very strong. And that's why you don't trust your siblings. Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so today we're going to be mm -hmm. uh, talking about Miss Hannah Grace's debut novel icebreaker it came out uh and it stormed tiktok i don't know a year ago maybe maybe less than a year ago 2022 i think is when it came out i read this last year of my own accord and i have read the second book um wildfire which i did not like the second book as much but i still liked it but um <laughs> This uh, is, I believe, also Maddie's first hockey romance. Um, so I will be uh, defending this to my dying breath. Uh, we will get into that later on. But <laughs> this book uh, is set at a college campus in Maple Hills in California. Uh, and it follows Anastasia. Mm -hmm. uh, I, first of all, loved that movie when I was growing up. Please tell hate me her name. The, please tell mm -hmm. me you watched the Anastasia movie, though. No? Okay. Next time we're doing in-person episodes, guess what Maddie's doing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, that's all I thought of the whole time. But um, And it also follows Nate here. He is the the hockey player, the hot hockey player. Ooh. And uh, Miss Anastasia is an ice skater. Now, there is a debacle, a prank, if you will that puts one of the ice rinks on campus out of commission and uh, causes what we will call forced proximity. Uh, this is also what I would consider grumpy sunshine, black cat, golden retriever trope. Um, she's grumpy. Mm, not really. We're already starting. Anyway, <laughs> uh, they're forced to share the rink uh, Anastasia is mm, very standoffish, I would say. She just is not interested in Nate at all. She's very type A. She wants to go to the Olympics. She loves ice skating, and she hates commitment. Uh, she wants to just mess around with hot D1 athletes, apparently. Um, which, you know, I guess in that age range, who doesn't? But, um, so... <laughs> Uh, Nate just wants to be her friend. He invites her to a party. Things happen. Uh, they start to hang out. And another character in this book is Anastasia's skating partner, Aaron. And he's a real piece of work. Um, he's one of those kids who's like parents never told them no. Uh, and so as an adult, they you like try and bargain with them and it just doesn't work because they never learned the, the skill of dealing with uh, being told no rejection i guess i don't know uh, but he's very controlling it causes a lot of tension between him and anastasia and anastasia and nate there's a lot of characters it is a hockey team maddie 
There's too many characters even for this. <laughs> and, it's too many. Um, so they come to grow together uh, as friends and as saucy partners, uh, eventually getting to the commitment point. But there's some bumps along the way. Um, and there are a few things that I, you know, a few qualms I have with this book that we'll get into the spoiler section. But that's kind of the general gist. Um, and they both are pursuing professional careers within those particular sports, I guess. Uh, Anastasia wants to be an Olympian, and Nate wants to play, Nathan wants to play for the NHL. Uh, so that is Icebreaker. For those of you who have not joined us before, the way we start off the podcast is I give you a little breakdown, or Maddie gives you a little breakdown, depending on who's hosting, uh, and then we talk about whether or not we would recommend it to a fellow reader, whether or not we would recommend it to our underage sisters, which is really just someone under the age of 18, uh, and then we also rate it on a scale of one to five on our four core pillars, which are the witty banter character development, smut, and realism. Then we give it an overall score. So we are going to start out with whether or not Maddie would recommend this book to a fellow reader. And I already know what you're going to say. <laughs> no, I would not. In fact, I texted Kate and I said, Kate, have you read this? And she was like, no. And I was like, don't. I, I'm, going, I'm going in the other direction of telling people not to read it. Um, I... I was seriously expecting this book to be good, considering how many people love it. Like, this is not just like, this is not an Akatar thing. This is like, this is like a, a, people are like, this is the best book that you need to read in order to get into romance. And if you want to get into romance and hockey romances, this is the best point for you to start. This book is not good. The plot is horrible. The characters are bad. And all they do is, meh. And I literally fast forwarded because I was listening to it on the audio on the audio audiobook. I fast forwarded through almost every single time with after the second time because it's so frequent. I give it a uh, no, a resounding no on my uh, recommendation list. And yeah, we'll we'll talk about my rating later, but like. I, I want to preface this also that, like, just remember that my baseline for a, for a one, or if I could give it a zero, is Twisted Don't. Love. Do not. No, I just, just keep that in mind as we, we go through this, okay? Just keep that in mind. Okay, well, I would recommend it, and I have. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, to me. <laughs> um, And you may have gone to your friends, well, our friends, we, they overlap at this point mostly i went to grace and i said i i knew maddie was gonna hate this and grace was like i did too but we still like it solidarity sister um i feel like and i'll get into this later but uh i will say after consuming many a literature in the genre almost every hockey romance is exactly the same so i don't have high hopes for you enjoying any of them but uh i can and have recommended this to people if you have read the deal series and you liked it by l kennedy i think you would enjoy this book um if you're more into emily henry type stuff then perhaps not right this is like it's college so it's set in a more immature setting and it's not like ninth house where there's like a lot of really serious scary undertones and magic and stuff um that kind of counteracts the immaturity like it's just basically a bunch of frat dudes uh who play sports on a college campus uh and it is very highly centered in the smut arena so uh that's just kind of like a, a forewarning now i already know the answer to this but would you recommend this to someone under the age no <laughs> no they, it's literally like every other chapter and it's so graphic. I would not recommend this to somebody under the age of 18, which, um, I want to talk about maybe a little bit. We don't have to go into the spoilers for this one. Cause it's not a spoiler or anything, but like, uh, you know, like I usually like, I don't want humans on my covers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want that. 
Um, but I think that this book's cover is so childish and misleading that I think that it would be really easy for a kid to pick this up and read it. And this is something that a kid absolutely should not be reading. Yeah, I mean, I I agree. Um, I think the cover art is cute. It's cutesy. Mm. So like, I that's can the problem. The, that's the problem. But here's though. the thing. Here's the thing. Parents nowadays need to be doing that sort of thing with like social media with television with books you need to be reading and checking the ratings and stuff of the things your children are consuming before you allow them to look at it like there are things on disney plus that your children should not be watching right i think they're gonna put like poor things on there yeah <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um so I, I will I will concede on that point. It is not appropriate for children, and the cover can be misleading. I personally think it's it's cutesy, right? But like, I can see where a child would be like, "Oh, mommy, look!" Because um, the problem is, is like, if you go to Barnes and Noble right now, you will see this book on like a table, right? And it'll have like, for any, like I know I've, I've seen this one on the one that's just TikTok recommendations mm. and it, it'll be in there with books that don't have smut in them but are like like it'll be on the table with normal people like it'll be on a table with like books that are not totally sm- i mean normal people's a bad a bad example because that one's kind of <laughs> yeah. you know they're doing a lot in that one too but like like sarah adams books yeah like it like it just it doesn't fit in that same category and like i don't want humans on my covers or anything like that like i don't want that because Ew, who wants a shirtless man on the cover of their book? Embarrassing. Um, but I also don't think that this cover is, like, appropriate for how smutty this book is. That's fair. I would also say that the uh, Barnes & Noble employees have some culpability in putting it on a table like that. Yeah, you know. but the number one, couple, but number one comes down to Hannah Grace selecting this to be her cover of a book that she knows is really smutty, which I think is kind of not great i i mean i don't disagree i think nowadays though cover art does contribute a lot to sales mm-hmm. and stuff i mean just look at love in the time of only Sarah judge George. books i hated like that book and i loved the cover um yeah so but i i get it and i i do somewhat agree okay um <laughs> on to are four pillars on a scale of one to five maddie what would you rate the witty banter in this book like a two like they they start hooking up really fast and like it's not an enemies to lovers it's kind of like portrayed like that at first but it's just not like they just they're just vibing with each other from the get-go so i would say that it's a two I, I don't think it's enemies to lovers. Like, there's definitely some tension there. Like, it, it's playful in a lot of regards, more mm-hmm. so than, like, vicious or vindictive. Um, but for me, I enjoyed that. And I, I um, here's the thing, too. It's not witty in the sense, it's not witty like an Emily Henry book, right? Where you're reading it and, like, there's a lot of uh, intelligence behind the wit, but there is a lot of like back and forth um, just because of their dis- different personalities. And I enjoyed that. So uh, I'm going to give it a four. <laughs> Anyways, um, Maddie, on a scale of one to five, what would you rate the character development? Um, Probably a three. Uh. Cause, like I have to give it props for like what it tried to do. I don't think it I don't think that it was I really did not like the ending of this book. Um and it just felt like the plot went on for too long and some of these character de- like the character development's obviously tied into like the resolution of the plot and it's just kind of like meh. You know, okay. like you guys could have done this many moons ago. I do think the resolution to a certain extent is like a little drawn out. We do some like back and forth. There's not really like a third act breakup, I would say, but there is some t- like some disagreements. I did not Separation. like the epilogue. 
Um, it felt unnecessary, I would say. Yeah. But I do think, like, Nate is pretty consistent throughout the book. Um, he didn't really need to have a lot of changes. It's really Anastasia, I think, that is, like, the crux of the character development and their relationship, like, together, right? She's very type A. She's very closed off from, like, um, commitment and, like, deep emotional connection on that level. She has an abusive, an emotionally abusive relationship with her skate partner. She has some issues with eating disorders and that sort of thing and just kind of perfectionist. Um, and she also has some issues with like setting boundaries to a certain extent. And throughout the book, towards the end of the book, she learns how to set boundaries and put her skating partner in his place and to eat food, right? Like kind of that holistic journey. Uh, I didn't think it was, like, revolutionary in any regard. So I I think I'll give it a three as well. It wasn't, like, the character development was, like, part of the plot, but it wasn't, like, a super big part of the plot. And I also kind of knew what I was getting going into this because of the other hockey romances I had read. And so I did not expect the plot to carry the book. Most of the time, it's the steamy hot smut that carries these types of books um so i i think character development is a three for me um okay we'll do realism first on a scale of one to five my favorite part of this book is when terry and i were listening to it the other day and he goes the vancouver vipers for all the snakes in vancouver um it made me laugh really hard because it's yeah, it, that that just sums up the, like the realism. Like it's just not super realistic, um, and it's like, I mean, I guess maybe having an eating disorder, doing like ice skating, maybe I don't know. I know nothing about ice skating. I don't either. So I don't know. I give it a two. Uh, I do think certain elements are dramatized dramatized however you want to say it mm -hmm. for sure uh and the thing about these kinds of books too is they're always written by ladies and like you can watch as many hockey games as you want at the end of the day like i have no idea how the whole process works going from like a collegiate level to professional uh it does feel a little not realistic in the book that's for sure um and also becoming, like, an Olympic athlete. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know what that looks like. I do know what, like, college looks like in terms of, like, frat parties and stuff. And that felt pretty spot on in a Terry lot of regards. said that um, she's too old to be an Olympic athlete. I'm 21 is too old. It's Might usually, like, 15, 16-year-old girls who are running up the clock at the Olympics. Yeah. I mean, which is crazy. I, it is totally crazy, but I, I think it's kind of the same thing with like gymnasts and stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, so I can see that. that. I don't like. I don't know to to be honest to like base this off of, but I know that it's probably not super <laughs> realistic. So I'll give it a three. I think. Yeah, I think they're all super young when they go to the Olympics because they're like bendy still, and like <laughs> they can like recover from like injury most of the time. Yeah, well, I think, too, like, logistically, thinking, especially with, like, figure skating, um, the aerodynamics that are required, I think, to do that require very, like, slender women. Mm -hmm. And if you're young and you're watching this, i got news for you. Those hips are, they're gonna expand, my friends. Like, your body... No one's told you this. Your body will change. Uh, you don't have to be as aerodynamic as you are currently in this moment of time. Yeah. So enjoy I... the aerodynamic. <laughs> I... Yeah, I can tell you right now that uh, my hips are far too wide for me to quickly glide across ice. Um, but I, I'm, I'm assuming that like contributes to it. I don't know, but I, yeah, I mean, I also figured it wouldn't be super realistic in a lot of regards the drama i think between like young people made sense to a certain extent but um okay smut on a scale of one to five it's just too much 
I skipped it. I literally skipped like every single time that there was smut after the second time because it was just so consistent and so frequent. So I give it uh, I give it a two. Okay. Uh, <laughs> for the two times I listened to it. I, well, I read it slowly, apparently. Um, savored every second. I Again, mm. I knew what I was getting into, okay? Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. This is more on, like, the, uh, it's, it's on the far end of the smut scale, right? On one side here, we mm-hmm. have Sarah Adams, Fade to Black. And then we have, like, the crazy dark mafia romances, which I have read, which I will never recommend to Maddie because she will institutionalize <laughs> me. And hockey romances are, like, here. Uh, you know? And then, like, Emily Henry, she's, like, here. So there's mm-hmm. the kind of the spectrum for you. But they are much more smut-based. Now, it's very explicit, <laughs> and there is a lot of it. Um, but I enjoyed it. If you are a connoisseur of, if you prioritize that particular element of literature in your reading, I think you will enjoy it. So I'll give it a five. Um, and I will also say, I don't even remember, and I refuse to look at what I rated this book initially, um, back when I first read it. And we've been through this several times on the podcast, when we read reread stuff on here, which is mostly me rereading stuff that I make Maddie read and she doesn't like as much, I almost always like it less. Um, or upon like retrospect consuming other literature, I have to readjust my scale based on um, more data, data gal. Um, and so uh, my score will probably be lower than what I gave it initially. But Maddie, your score on a scale of one to five is... Okay, so like I said earlier, okay, my my low point is a is twisted love at a one. So I gave this a two because okay. it's not as bad as Twisted Love, but I don't like this book and I don't like it as much as I don't like Cheat Sheet. Um another sports book. It there's actually a lot of similarities between this book and that book. And um yeah. Um, I think there's one very extreme difference between this book and that book, which is that Anastasia is not, uh, like, his best friend. Yes, she is. His best friend who, like, continues to undermine other women. I guess that part. That was the part that That, I disliked about her most. That part's true. And she, she, I just, she's, Anastasia, I hate her name so much. And I hate the name Stassi. I'm sorry if that's your name. I hate it. Um, it's just one of those names that give me, yeah, hives. I don't know. It just it F the makes me. Hives. It gives me angry. It gets me really angry. I don't know why the name Stasi. Like it had. I just have such a visceral. Re- I don't know I don't, a single person named that. I don't like the nickname, but like I don't have a problem with the name Anastasia. Anastasia. She sounds like a a c word. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, she sounds like the uh, princess of Russia who was murdered and thrown into a yeah. well to me. But um, <laughs> one of one of many. Uh, I give this book like a low four, like on the cusp of three four. And again, I like hockey romances, so you know what? I'm not even gonna keep defending myself in this regard. I'm giving <laughs> it a low four. Period. Point blank. Now we're gonna get into the spoiler section where Maddie is gonna try and eat me alive, <laughs> and I am gonna be standing here with my sword and shield, fighting for my life. <laughs> um, <laughs> my flames. <laughs> so if you, you know what, it, it, you're picking sides, okay? Team black, team green. Um, if you want to read this and you haven't yet, get out of here. Uh, if you have listened to this and you haven't read it and you are more agreeable to maddie's opinions then maybe you can stick around and listen if you've read it stay with us um please girlies help me in the comments later please grace is gonna be in there helping me i know for sure um (laughs) not hannah grace my friend grace but (laughs) shout out grace yeah (laughs) But um, Hannah Gray, stay out of my comment section. Thanks. <laughs> we will be transitioning now, so if you don't want spoilers, get out of here. Get, get.
get on out of here. Um, yeah, so, okay, I will, let me, let me lay out the parts that I didn't like before you go off on your tangent. You, I'll tell you something really quick. Okay. It's like, I didn't like it so much that I don't even care if we don't talk about it. Like, I did, like, <sighs> that's how little I care. Okay, fine. Well, then I will, so uh, let's try it in two years, and, uh, and then we'll talk about some of the things. Okay, so uh, throughout the book, her teammate Aaron sucks. He's awful, whatever. He's manipulative. Also, I'm like, are you gay or not? Because <laughs> he's like Ryan from the hit movie High School Musical. Yeah, but I'm like, you're, yeah, very much Ryan from High School Musical. I'm like, okay, are you in love with her or do you want to kill her? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Are you um, trying to wear her skin or? <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like hyper controlling. He sucks, whatever, right? And then um, I honestly was like, he's got to be like gay and just like really mean. Tea, you know? Um, <laughs> and then at the end, like towards their end recital or whatever the hell it is. He thinks it'll be a good idea to unconsensually kiss her on the mouth at the end of their number <laughs> routine. <laughs> their routine, thank you. <laughs> their musical number. Yeah. Uh, and Nate gets real pissed and punches him. And I, that part, I was just like, oh, come on. Like, I'm over that kind of, like, male confrontation. It's not, like, it's not, go ahead, girls, in real life, watch a man do that and tell me it doesn't give you the ick. You know? Like, let's just deal with our problems like adults. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, so that part I was like, eh, the epilogue sucks. She's like, I'm my second gold medal, and I'm having kids, and he's in the NHL. I'm like, nobody cares. Just leave it off. <laughs> just leave it off the book. Um, I literally don't care. So, and then I guess more context, like, Aaron, her skating partner, gets injured and he lies about why he gets injured. And so Nate decides to take the fall and he gets kicked off the ice for the hockey team, which he was way too willing to do for someone who wants to go into the NHL. Um, Mm -hmm. But her skating partner heals whatever and then he gets hurt again and Nate is pulled off the ice again and he's like well I'll be your skating partner and that at that point they'd been doing the whippy saucy you know and she fights with Aaron so she moves in to Nate's house with all of his teammates which I was like whoa girl (laughs) pump the brakes uh and they're like well while we're skating partners we shouldn't hook up even though they're living together. So obviously that doesn't work. Duh. Duh, right. duh, I also, duh. I love that he could just easily transition to figure skating, which is notoriously easy, obviously. Everybody right. can just pick up a pair of skates and start lifting women above their heads. Right. Just because you have played hockey, that makes total right. sense. Right. Um, and Anna Sue Terry, also- we got something to do later. <laughs> The dirty dancing scene. Yes, exactly. Uh, um, but a- another, mm, I guess, interesting part to me. Mm, I wouldn't say interesting. She, her skinny partner drops her, and so th- she's really nervous to do like all the jumps and stuff. She's got kind of a mental block, and he helps her with that because he's a big, strong man. Um, really, the most compelling parts to me are are the smut the plot itself is somewhat subpar i will admit um here here's where my argument lies right as i have as i have aforementioned i have read several of several hockey romance i read the deal series both of them there's like two kind of first gen second gen if you will like skins uh and and there's a, like a billion characters because there are there's the hockey team right and we get introduced to a lot of their future love interests for latter books in the first or second book in a series that's how it always goes right so there's a ton of characters all the girls obviously have friends too so then you got to try and keep track of them lots of intermingling sometimes there's like love triangles with people on like the basketball team because everybody's got to be in a sport apparently 
Um, so there's always a lot of characters that can make it difficult to keep track of. Um, and there is a second book in the series that picks up with one of the other characters. Um, and then you get introduced to an entirely new set of characters. And I will say reading that second book was difficult for me because of how many characters there were. I couldn't remember a lot of what happened in the first book or a lot of who these side characters were. And so it wasn't as impactful for me when I was reading the second book. Um, especially because they're coming out now, right? It's not like the deal where they're all out where I can just hop into the next book and I remember. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a little bit of a difficult transition for me, I will say. Um, almost all of these also are set in a college setting. Uh, and I think the authors almost always use like the frat boy stereotype. I don't know if that's true of hockey players in real life either. I'm going to be honest, the only like... Yeah, the only hockey player I've ever met is Terry, <laughs> and he's normal. Yeah, my, my fiance. Your fiance. And he's a normal person. Like he's not a frat boy. Could you imagine? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I can't. He's so funny. Um, but so and they're also very smut centric, right? They're very centered around that particular element, the plot is almost always like secondary to that and even even some of the nhl hockey romances i've read are pretty similar they just kind of go with like the dump like the himbo vibe you know um and so there tends to be a lot of immaturity they uh, they try to pack in a lot of tropes too that being said i was somewhat accustomed to that going into this and so it wasn't as unenjoyable for me and in terms of the hockey romance genre this is one of the better ones but i mean like i don't think your your concerns or your dislike are legitimate i mean it helps me in the sense that i know that we can't we i don't think we should do hockey romances after this um unless we do ones that are set in like a more mature setting like I don't know, maybe a hockey player, like, coming out of his career or something, um, where it's just not as... And here's the thing, too, about hockey romance books. We don't, like, they don't really, like, go play-by-play -play through a hockey game, right? Which I enjoy, because that would, I would lose interest. I like watching them, but I don't want to read about that. Um, so it's almost never about the hockey itself, like the actual sport. It's more so about like the people who play it and it's just something that they like do, which I thought was interesting in this book because we get a lot more detail about like Anastasia with like the ice skating, right? There's a lot more like description with that as opposed to the hockey games and stuff, but, um, I still enjoy these. I know what to expect going into them. Um, it's And again, for those of you who are joining who haven't watched all of our episodes, um, I, a few years ago, re-entered my journey into reading by <laughs> reading Facebook Wattpad stories, okay? on Apple About? Free, about werewolves, where you have to pay... Shame. As, Shame. as the Shame. online authors who are Shame. writing in their basements, uh, or when they get the old ladies when they get off of work and they release <laughs> chapters weekly. Like that's what got me back into reading. And that is basically all smut, almost zero plot, right? And so like <laughs> I do enjoy really good plots, right? I loved Ninth House. I like I like a lot of other books that we've read that don't have smut in them at all. Um, whether or not they're romance. I love fantasy books. So like I would say I have like a, a wide range, uh but it, it is something that I'm more so into, I think, than Maddie is or, like, ever will be. And I, I honestly, I think the level of, like, smut that you're comfortable with w before it goes too far is kind of, like, things we never got over. Um, and there's so much plot in that that, like, the amount of smut makes sense because it's a 500-page book and there's, like, a lot of other stuff going on at the same time. And there is kind of, like, a cohesive story. So, mm -hmm. I, I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> I'll have to readjust, of course. I, you know what? When I told you to read this book, I think I knew in my heart of hearts you wouldn't like it. And I was <laughs> hoping. Yeah. I was hoping and praying. Yeah. But it's okay. I have grace 
she's she's my little smut gal and you have um kate who i think you and her are a lot more in tune on certain things than like you and i are when we're reading literature for the most part though like again if you haven't watched every episode almost always maddie and i are like somewhat on the same page about books there's been like a handful and i mean like three or four where we just totally disagree uh and I would say this is one of them, but I still understand where you're coming from. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is not Akatar. Like, it's not, like, something that we just totally disagree with. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, my favorite part of the book was when I thought that she was going to die. <laughs> um, <laughs> my favorite part of the book is when she was dead for a couple of seconds. That was great. Um, the rest of it was just so like there okay i understand that there needs to be a lot of characters because it's a hockey team there are literally i think like 11 characters in this book there is no reason why we need to have that many people involved in this story at all yeah well she is like she's like her her other friend who's a roommate and her her skating partner's a roommate and she like seeing a guy on the basketball team for a while and like, and he was seeing and he was seeing the theater girl and uh, it just get Aaron convoluted. was Aaron was dating Kitty who was at one point in time dating Nathan or Nathaniel or Nate or whatever the frig his name is and then Robbie like and then the, there's Ro- the, yeah Robbie and Lola and then you've got Henry and JJ and like just like and like people just kept going and then you got all the coaches and their parents which by the way his resolution with his dad never happened like nothing happens with him and his dad yeah. or him and his sister and it's just yeah. like why do we have all these characters and all these storylines that don't go anywhere that's fair i will say like the trip to so they go to each other's they go meet each other's families during christmas and she goes out to colorado and mm. uh slay slay <laughs> <laughs> and she falls through the ice and almost dies whatever yada 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 his dad and his sister show up and like him and his dad don't have a good relationship so it's weird the other isn't really a resolution to that so the, i mean like the the purpose in the plot i think was to like bring them closer together right like showing each other different elements of their personal lives but his dad that whole thing just didn't really need to happen and there's already been so much like uh crap happening with the ice skating and the ice rink that i don't think her near-death experience was necessary like she already got dropped you know right so she's always getting hurt anyway so yeah so i yeah i i see i see the the flaws i still (laughs) i still stand by it yeah i wish she (laughs) would have stayed dead but he's mine Ugh. And then, like, every time I would think about them doing it, I'm, like, seeing those people on the cover, and I'm, like, ugh. They're, like, they look like they're freaking kids. <laughs> you look at that, and you tell me that's a 21-year-old man. He's 17 at best. <laughs> look okay. at him. Look, I want you to look deep and hard into his eyes. I don't, I, it's hard for me to judge how old people are. People think I'm, like, 30 sometimes, and then they think I'm, like, 18. I'm, like, average, average, average it out. But, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to tell nowadays. I think some of, like, my sister, who is next oldest next to me, I think looks younger than the sister right below her. And they're very close in age, but, like, do you know what I mean? Like, sometimes it's hard to gauge. Mm-hmm. Um... But I'm not, I thought he looked like he was in college on the cover. No, I keep showing it like it's going to make a, a difference. Child. But if you're watching right now. I want you to look. Hold up the, hold up the thing. <laughs> Pull it up. Look deep and hard into that man's eyes. Is that an adult? No, that is a 17-year-old boy <laughs> named Logan. <laughs> That's my brother's name. <laughs> I well, yeah, I know that, but that's that's Logan right there. Not your brother, just a Logan. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say that's a that's a big child. Um. <laughs> <laughs> anywho, 
Uh, mm. So, yeah, conflicting thoughts on Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. I Again, I have read the second book. I didn't like it as much as I liked the first book. It doesn't take place on a hockey, like, it's a hockey player that we're introduced to in this book, but it doesn't, it takes place at, like, a summer camp. That one's story, like, the plot just was so dragged out. Oh, my gosh. And Maddie will never read it now, which doesn't matter anymore. That This book is, the plot is so dragged out. I can't even imagine what the next one is like. It's, it's even worse, but um, also this book is too long. I will. I will agree. Fifty chapters. I I'm will sorry. Agree. Yeah, they should. 50? Hockey romances should be like thirty max. Hard fast rule on that one. Yeah. Um, just way too much. And if you want to make a book of them just doing it, just make a book of them just doing it. Don't even put a plot in it. Yeah. That's why I like novellas too. Novellas, yeah, yeah. Just, just uh, Thirty pages of pure smut, and that. I like... really liked. I really liked um, "Cross My Heart." That was like one of the best book series I read last year, and that is just a filthy, filthy. That's book a good, that was like, but Dark the plot has a, but, but it has such a good plot. Like, and it's like I honestly, truly believe that that book deserves so much hype like that series there's so much hype that it's on my list after my sabbatical yeah it's not on kindle unlimited anymore so mm. right. that's okay i'll have book yeah. money by then hopefully mm. <laughs> it's um anywho what are we what are we up to next week Next week, we're reading The Secret Service of Tea and Treason, which I actually surprisingly have the book. Uh, this is one of the books that I bought last year, and I just have not read since I bought I think, it. I think I was horrible. with you when you got it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, which, um, it's kind of, it's like Britain-based, yeah? Spies, kind of? Um, it, they're spies, yeah. I would assume the they're, UK. They're British- pretty. They're British in my head because they're, like, drinking tea, and his last name is Bixby. Okay, yeah, for sure. Which is so pertinent with the Kate Middleton drama yeah. going on. <laughs> so true. Look at us. Where is she? Where's Kate? <laughs> Where is she? Um, anyway, yeah, so this will be ready next week. Um, hopefully I like it. I hope so, too. I can't. I can't take it anymore. At this point, I feel like maybe we're manifesting the future. Maybe we're clairvoyant. The future is just maybe. determined by the books we pick. Um, fun plot storyline for a, a novel. Mm. Delete that so no one takes it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. If you're uh, wondering what we're up to when you're not listening or watching the podcast, uh, you can check out our social media accounts at the Witty Banter Book Club. We have an Instagram, a TikTok, and a Pinterest. Um, if you're watching, kisses. Thank you. If you're listening, also thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. <laughs> like, subscribe, whatever. Whatever feels right in your heart, you know? We appreciate any support. We've got the Etsy store up still with bookmarks if you'd like to snag some of those cuties for your nice little novels um and i think really all that's left to say until next time is one congratulations maddie here comes the bride um and also happy, happy reading, reading.